There is an expression, and it goes like this, make a difference, not just a living. So we're pleased to welcome to After Hours someone who's made a big difference in the lives of a lot of people. We'll get to how Travis Hamannick has done that in a moment. But first, after seven seasons with the Islanders, how is life in Calgary? And if you want to get this program off to a good start, I'd say uh, work uh, dream come true into the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the best answer. Uh, it, it's been great. Um, it, it's certainly uh, a bit of an adjustment for uh, the lifestyle. Um, that side of things, but uh, ever since we got the news, my wife and I have, uh, have been ecstatic, and, and we bought a house right away uh, early in the summer and, and uh, got here early, and it's uh, it's certainly been a, a great fit for me in, in Calgary. I mean, what a wonderful city, and they've embraced us as a family, and uh, it, it's been a, a great change. Okay, before we get to tonight's game, a tweet from JT Wozni. What's been the <laughs> toughest adjustment you've had to make off the ice in your move from New York to Calgary? And... Uh, qualify this by saying let's not make it sound like you're a big city boy because that would be an insult to the 1200 people who live in St. Malo, Manitoba. Yeah I think everyone watching back in St. Malo wouldn't be too happy but uh, um, probably not having to use my horn as much. Um, yeah. It seems like in New York you're always fighting traffic but uh, um, you know, we lived in a condo in New York, and, and we certainly enjoyed our time there. Uh, but we have a chance to, uh, uh, we have a, over an acre here, and, and uh, we live outside of town. So we have a bit of space, and uh, we're able to kind of just enjoy that lifestyle a little bit better. Okay, Louie, tonight's right. game and the mini streak that the Flames are on right now. Yeah, playing pretty well right now. But this one here was, uh, you know, you got the sense before the game that both teams thought this was a real important game, and obviously a Pacific Division rival. Uh, how did you see this one here? They were really good early on. They pushed you back on your heels, but you guys stuck with it and found a way. Yeah, that's that's probably a good way to say it. Um, it's weird to think that you know we're early December and we're already must-win games mm -hmm. and talking about points, but uh, that's what it is. And and uh, we probably didn't get off to the start that we necessarily wanted, and uh, you know maybe a little bit slower at the start, but. It was a grind. We stuck with it, and uh, we had a game plan and just kept trying to execute it, and the, the boys in the locker room and the boys in the bench really did a good job at sticking to it. Yeah. Travis, June 24th, you were introduced at uh, Flames Press Conference <coughs> along with the team's other major off-season acquisition, Mike Smith, and we got some pictures of that press conference here. Uh, it was a special moment during which I'm guessing you were thinking, What's going on with Mike Smith's beard? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to grow my beard for a while too, and, and I show up and meet Smitty, and uh, uh, I didn't know who the third person it was that we had acquired with his beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trade, uh, you had requested one from uh, the Islanders in training camp two seasons ago, and then at the end of that season, you rescinded the trade because uh, the person that you were concerned about, who was ill in Winnipeg, had recovered. Uh, but still, though, the specter of the trade hung over you probably for another full year. And then uh, during the draft this year, I think in the second round, the Islanders dealt you to the Flames. Where were you and how did you hear about the trade? Yeah, um, you know, I think first and foremost, everyone in the Honors organization really stuck by me. Uh, they knew what was going on, and, and uh, right from Garth and, and ownership right down to all the guys in the locker room, they really stuck with me. So, um, you know, things kind of unfolded as they unfolded. And as the summer went along, uh, you start hearing your name out there, and mm -hmm. you're really not understanding what's going to happen but uh, uh, I was actually getting ready at two uh, two of my buddies at my cabin at Lake of the Woods and uh, we were gearing up uh, on the Friday night to get ready to go for a day of fishing and uh, one of my buddies Justin um, walked into my room at about 7 30 in the morning and just kind of stood over our bed and I woke up and he was looking at me and I didn't know what was going on and uh, that alone would have been strange <laughs> yeah, but it's happened a couple times, though. <laughs> okay. um, and and, he, just, <laughs> and uh, he was just kind of looking at me, dumbfounded. And uh, I finally said, what's up? And he said, you check your phone. And um, he said, you've been traded to, to Calgary. Oh. And uh, abruptly and, and uh, happily jumped out of bed and uh, um, got the news. And it was, uh, we didn't go fishing that day. <laughs> All right, tweet from Richard Stahl. What was it like riding the train to the arena in New York to Barclays, uh, which a lot of players have said must make it feel like every game is a road game? Yeah, it was certainly, um, it was different uh, because of the years prior being at the Coliseum. Uh, everyone enjoyed driving to the rink and those things and then with the move. Um, but the Islanders went out of their way to make it as easy on us as possible. And everybody lived relatively close to the train station. So after a couple weeks of adjustment, uh, uh, just getting used to that schedule of things, it, it really wasn't a bother as much as uh, everyone kind of perceived mm -hmm. the outside noise to be. It didn't really bother guys at all. It was about an hour commute and throw your headphones in, your hat down low and away you go. It's a lot easier here, Louis. <laughs> you know, I want to get back to what you talked about the Islanders being so uh, everybody on board with you wanting that that trade and then not wanting it. But for you personally playing, was it 
Was it tough to put that in the back burner afterwards once that was out? Because you know how the media picks that up. We're going to talk <laughs> about it everywhere you went. I'm sure they wanted to talk about it. Yeah. Did it distract you at all, or were you um, able just to check it at the door? You know what? I tried to check it at the door as much as possible. Um, you know, I played for months before um, all the news broke, and uh, certainly wasn't too thrilled when it did. But I was understanding the situation that eventually it probably would. Um, but. You know, everyone from Garth and, and Cappy, uh, our coach at the time, and, and certainly all our teammates were, were more than understanding. I mean, these are guys that I played with for seven plus years and, and have known for a long time, and, and they uh, know my family situation, and they were uh, above and beyond understanding and accommodating to me the entire time. So I, I can't say enough good things. So as far as my play on the ice, I was able kind of just to park it and, and focus. Well, one uh, person from that group, Dougie Wade, who was the assistant coach at the time, said nothing but great things about you through that process. So just wanted to make sure I relayed that message I appreciate you. it. Thanks, okay, Daddy. let's move on from the Islanders. Uh, the best most players can say, Travis, when their careers are done was I was a good teammate, I helped my team win, I gave it 100%. You, on the other hand, will be able to say when you're done that you affected a lot of people's lives in a good way, a good hands-on way. So I'll set the stage here by saying this goes back to when your father passed away, uh, your father, Gerald, from a heart attack when you were 10 years of age. You internalized your grief all the way to the NHL and then yeah and then it was hard um, you know kind of uh, you, you go from playing junior hockey and everyone's always around you at all times um, yeah I mean those those are great videos to see um, it's hard to look back on these but and, and anyways when I was 20 years old and my grief kind of hit me all over again and um, I needed a better way to deal with it and channel it and and uh, you want to be able to help out and you want to look back on your time in, in, in life, not only your career, but in life and know that you tried to make a difference and a positive impact in someone else's life because there's a lot more to hockey. So um, I tried to use my, um, you know, my stage to, to make a difference and we created Hammers D partner and, and uh, at every home game and, and now at quite a few road games as well. We, we host families that unfortunately have, have been through a similar situation that me and my family did and um, it, it helps. It helps them and it, it's certainly in a weird selfish way it helps me as well deal with my grief. Before we get more deeply into that, boy, those home movie, movies are they're a thing of beauty. Um, in the earlier ones, you were the little rug rat trying to get in on the action with <laughs> yeah, your yeah, brother Jesse and, and your sisters uh, Carly and Melissa. So let's separate two home movie clips here that really are compelling. Uh, the first one is you driving with your mother Lisa through the Hammonick farmland uh, not long after your father Gerald had passed away. And the second one is you and Jesse helping to bring in the harvest that year. Jesse went through that field last time around the farm with Dad. Yeah. Are we just not all done? Oh, you're right. Terrifying. think when you see those clips it's hard um, you know I feel for me and my family um, those those are videos that I, I don't watch very often so it's uh, with a heavy heart that that uh, we certainly uh, you know have on TV now but you know it kind of gives everybody an insight as to mm -hmm. how difficult of a time it was and you know those are that's about 24 hours after my dad died and you know our life was completely blown up if, if you can imagine it uh, and I, when I think back at it now I don't know how my mom did it we had four young kids farm middle of harvest I mean everything was playing against her and she stood strong the entire time you know I think many of us know Travis there is no book on grief you handled it the best way you could but now that you've given voice to it my goodness what a difference you've made uh, to visitors at Islander home games and now at uh, Calgary Flames games here at the Saddle Dome how did you reach the decision to have kids who'd lost parents become your visitors at games yeah, you know what, I sat down with uh, the staff in New York at the time, uh, Kimber Auerbach and, and Ann Rena, and uh, uh, they run the programs and, and everything in New York. And I mean, what two awesome people, great people that you want around you. And so they, uh, you know, we sat down and we came up with the idea immediately that I wanted to be able to help out. And, and we unfortunately found out that there's 
quite the demand for people wanting to come and be a part of the program. And, and uh, I say that unfortunately because that, that means people are dying and people are losing parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, you never want to see someone go through that. But uh, we hit the ground running. And, and uh, right after the trade to Calgary, it was probably the first conversation I had that same day uh, was to, to have uh, Blake from the Flames, uh, who's done a great job here, um, be able to get in contact with Andy Kimber and try to get the program uh, up and running as fast as we can. So the first home game, we were ready to rock, and we were. It's called, by the way, the D Partner Program. Here is a tweet from Joshua Marshall. Doesn't have a question. it has got a statement, and this reflects the feelings of a lot of people tonight. Uh, he says, my dad was from the same town as Travis's. I lost my father when I was 14 years old on December 23, 1998. What you've done for the kids that lost a loved one is unreal, Travis. Thank you for giving back and helping these kids out. And you've even helped me at the age of 33. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Here's an excerpt, uh, Travis, from a story that appeared on the National in March of 2015. The McGuigan family from Prince Edward Island <coughs> lost their father, Brendan, who was a voracious Islander fan. We have some pictures to prove it. Um, five months after he passed away, the entire family, with the support of the UPEI Panthers and the local community, traveled to New York to meet you after an Islanders game. Yeah, that... Uh that first shot was actually at a training camp uh, that we had in Prince Edward oh, Island. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. was at that camp. Um, that's, a, that's a great photo. Um, I'm not sure if, if we did meet, but I hope I had the chance. No, but, you did uh, meet them, and let's just have no, a... The, the, oh, their father you did meet Brendan. in the no, no. training camp. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I was I hoping he was driving yeah, around, okay. maybe. <laughs> All right, but to be clear, you met the family. So here's an excerpt from that story. So when the family arrives at the rink to see the Islanders play, they fulfill one of their father's dreams. I know he's here with us tonight. He's with all of them. Yep. No doubt he's here. And that was the son, Caden, the only boy in the family. And uh, they waited around to meet you at the end of the game, and he made a big difference in their <laughs> lives. So um, we should also point out, this is all on your dime. Yeah. Uh, and your visitors get VIP treatment. You're to be commended for that. The spirit of your father, Gerald, has guided you throughout your career. Uh, describe the ritual start for you to every game you play. That's a great question. Um, you know, it starts with... Uh, uh, my drive to the rink. Um, obviously, my wife is uh, at home before I leave and give her a kiss. And I always uh, call my mom on the way to the rink before mm -hmm. every game we talk and we say a prayer. Um, and then I come to the rink and try to keep it as light as I can. But during the national anthem, uh, um, you know, I say another prayer and usually sing along to some of the anthem. And uh, look up in the upper left corner of the rink because my dad was always watching me from the upper left corner of the rinks in St. Malo and everywhere else I played. So um, certainly a really religious family and my faith is a big part of me and I know that God's uh, let my dad watch so I just kind of envision that he's up there in the left corner. Perfect. Tell us about your most recent project to bring Indigenous families to uh, Calgary Flames home, ga home games from up north. Yeah, it's something that, uh, you know, my wife and I just started. Um, it's no secret that uh, I'm extremely proud to be from Canada. Um, and I'm, I'm a huge music fan as well and, and a huge fan of the Tragically Hip. So um, as everyone else in Canada has, has done, they've, they've certainly followed along and uh, the unfortunate uh, situation with Gord Downey. Um, you know, when I, when I look at that situation, it's someone to certainly look up to. Mm -hmm. And the best thing that I think you can do in this, in this, in this life is, is donate your time. And what better of a situation to use to donate your time than unfortunately the, uh, that's a great shot there. Um, Unfortunately, well, that's you with Gordon yeah, and that's Johnny Faye. Gordon, the Johnny Faye, um, yeah. great, great guy. Um, Johnny is, and we hung out for a while and and uh, hung out with Gordon. And those are my two best friends, Justin and Christian. And it was a great night. But um, as I was saying with with uh, with Gord, what a, what a great thing that he did to to donate the last couple of years of his life to really give voice um, and to create a conversation on some kind of darker moments in our country's history. And mm -hmm. so I think that uh, you know. I'm extremely proud of my heritage and being Métis. Um, and I, I just, my, you know, my wife and I took the initiative to follow Gord's lead and, and help out as best as we can. So we've decided to bring in some families from uh, all the Northern Territories of Canada throughout the season. And we're gonna fly them in. And uh, between us and the Flames with, with all the accommodations, we're uh, really gonna give them the five-star treatment right through the entire weekend so they can really enjoy themselves and uh, uh, have a chance to experience something with Maybe they never will because of how remote of a, remote of a you know, mm -hmm. location they're from. So right. it's certainly exciting. And these are families that you've met through the course of the season here. And the Northern Project, I believe, starts next weekend, right? Yeah, next weekend we're hosting. Uh, we have a, a big Skype call tomorrow night to uh, mm -hmm. announce and, and talk to the first uh, family that we have coming. So we're thrilled. 
You know, you spend some time with Travis Hamanek, and I yes. think you want to be a better person. Is that not the feeling we're getting here tonight, Louis? 100%. All right. Absolutely. Travis Hamanek of the Calgary Flames, our guest on After Hours. Uh, when we come back, show us your ink. It's one of our favorite parts of this program. <laughs> We're back at Scotiabank Saddle Dome as we continue with After Hours and our guest Travis Hamonic, or Hamonic as he was known in the 2000 Super Novice Brick Tournament. <laughs> as Petrangelo comes back, fires one off the ankle of Hamonic. <laughs> and he felt that one. That All comes right. out. He can still shoot in the corner. Hey, still after your block shots uh, back then. That's played the same way I do now, I guess. Yeah. We're not here to criticize the uh, brick play-by-play -play announcers. He didn't have the advantage of another eight to ten years in your career to figure <laughs> out that you were going to be a star. Uh, what do you remember about that tournament aside from the stinger from Petran? <laughs> I remember winning. Um, yeah. It was it was great. Me and uh, Jordan Eberle got recruited to play with the Vancouver Vipers. Um, and what a neat experience that just kind of opened my, my my eyes to a whole different world and um you know my dad and my mom uh, uh and my brother were there throughout the entire tournament my sisters popped in and out and uh it was it was a great uh, family you know memory and unfortunately uh um you know my dad passed away shortly after so it was one of the best memories i have and it was during harvest and he had actually flown home uh, because he had to start harvest and uh, um, surprised me for the gold medal game. Oh, I didn't wow. know he was coming back, and my mom had arranged it. Um, and uh, needless to say, that was uh, probably the best surprise I had in my life, given yeah. how everything else played out. Well, we can see why it was such a treasured memory then, or is a treasured memory. Uh, Travis, ink, body art, <laughs> tattoos. Mom, turn the camera off. Uh, apparently, <laughs> they're all the rage with your generation, and you, Travis, are not without. Hi, this is Lou from Tattoo Lou. <laughs> over at the <laughs> Ink Republic store at the South oh, Shore Mall. Come check out Travis Hamanick. He's getting tattooed from the New York Islanders <laughs> right here today at Ink Republic. Oh, man. Okay, so we got some pictures of you getting inked by Popo, I think. Uh, yep, Popo. And we, and we also have some close-up pictures of uh, some of the tattoos you have. So... Um, What's the message in these tattoos? Let's get to the pictures here oh. so we can see. First of all, I must have well, been that, doing uh, push-ups. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that's a picture of our farmyard, and, and uh, that's actually on the back of my, my dad's tombstone now. Um, so I had a picture of it done on my arm, and, and uh, um, it just you know reminds me of where I'm from, mm -hmm. and, and obviously my dad and my family as well. Next one. Um, yeah, so I had that one done and I tried to hide it from my mom. That's the Blessed Virgin Mary on my lower uh, forearm. Um, and we're, you know, a very religious family and, and my faith is uh, a massive part of my life and, and uh, what I am as a person. Um, and so I wanted that. that. And uh, yeah. obviously we talked about how proud I am to be Canadian and, and uh, from, from being at home. And uh, it's kind of a constant reminder. And uh, that'll be the last one, I think. Yeah, that's, uh, those are the days that everybody on my, uh, in my family is born. Um, so like I said, everything is right there front and center. Certainly all my tattoos, uh, mm. a lot of meaning to me. So Travis, lest anyone think uh, extensive body art uh, like you have is a painless procedure, uh, <laughs> here you are to say otherwise. I'd honestly rather lay down and have someone take a slap shot at my face right now. <laughs> I swear oh, to God. Man. I'm not even kidding you. All right. uh, so you wouldn't recommend it, but uh, then be careful what you wish for. Uh, February oh. of 2012, oh. you took one uh, Islanders uh, at home to Buffalo, and this was a shot, I think, by Christian Ehrhoff that went off a stick and hit you flush in the face. This was oh, ugly. Man. Oh. Uh, hard to look at, I know, but how much damage was done here? Um... Uh, oh, that's tough to look at. Um, quite, a, quite a bit. Um, you know, I shattered my nose, ripped off my septum, over 100 stitches, completely reconstructed my nose and uh, cracked my orbital bone. Oh. And um, it, it's kind of funny because I went into emergency surgery and the plastic surgeon uh, uh, was Googling pictures of what I looked like before so she could reconstruct my nose. And this is what she gave me oh again. My so. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> but that's pretty, uh, some pretty gruesome pictures. Certainly. You want to be a hockey player. Okay. Right? So oh, your mother, there, there your you mother Lisa, was watching at home in Winnipeg, couldn't get to Long Island fast enough, five days in hospital with her at your side. And three weeks later, you were back on the ice wearing a cage, a testament to your toughness. Uh, back to hockey here for a second. Here's a tweet from... Gary, how often are you asked about the Taylor Hall hit? This is from the Memorial <laughs> Cup, Brandon versus Windsor in 2010. Uh, often enough, it certainly comes up in conversation. And uh, here's here's the hit here. Um, 
it was kind of a weird play. Taylor Taylor leaned in, and and then I leaned in, and he pulled back, and I was committed. Um, and, and we played uh, in a, in a couple tournaments together. Oh. And oh. It's it's a growing. It's amazing that he got up. And, I can't uh, believe he got up. Even better, he scored a hat trick right yeah. after too. So oh, unbelievable. Oh, he had a yeah. couple of carnival like. But goals. that's your job, yeah. right? You're there to take yeah, care it, of him and try and shut him down. He was one of the highest. Well, he was drafted first overall for a reason. But that was your game plan. We got to get one more thing in here. Summer of '16, best remembered for you, for. Summer of 16. Uh, certainly. Um, you got married. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the guys were yelling at me, distracting me right now. There you are. You were <laughs> kill me now. Okay. But, uh, that's a we're great sorry picture, I had to give you yeah. the answer. It didn't quite work the way I hoped it would. Uh, yesterday was Stephanie's birthday, and you celebrated by. We celebrated by. Uh, going to get an ultrasound we have uh, a little girl on the wow. way Congratulations. We're, thank you very much we're, we're thrilled uh she's going to be an amazing mom she's uh, the best part of my life right now and we can't wait to to welcome that little girl in our family the due date april so uh right right in the thick of the playoffs be a little bit inconvenient <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when she had told me the news we we're thrilled and then uh immediately my mind jumps to that right away travis great to have you on the show travis hamannick has touched a whole lot of lives in a good way and Again, it was a pleasure to have you with us in After Hours. Uh, we'll be back to conclude the proceedings from Scotiabank Saddle Dome in a moment. Great. Thanks. There's Harvey the Hound of the After Hours Fireplace. Christmas isn't far away. A week tonight, we're back here at Scotiabank Saddle Dome for the Flames and Nashville Predators. That'll do it for this edition of After Hours. Thanks for watching tonight and good night.